dear students hope you all got an insight about our previous module let us see about the physical chemical and biological changes during spoilage we all know that food spoilage is characterized by decline in eating quality resulting in food that is less acceptable to the consumer in terms of appearance taste texture and odor it was estimated that around 20% of all food is lost due to spoilage the spoilage may be due to intrinsic or extrinsic factors and leads to changes in physical chemical and biological forms of food on completion of this session you will be able to infer the physical chemical and biological changes in food due to spoilage and also able to identify spoilage in different food products let us now focus into the physical changes during spoilage of food the most common physical changes that occur in food as they spoil are evaporation dehydration and separation unlike chemical changes they do not result in formation of new components water evaporates out of improperly stored foods creating an unattractive dried out appearance and possible undesirable flavor changes water can also be from foods like yogurt gelatin and cream as they age separation of water and oil occurs in foods such as non homogenized milk mayonnaise salad dressing and high moisture cheese when they are stored too long or frozen and later thawed separation is the reason that sandwiches with mayonnaise or high moisture cheese do not freeze well next we'll see about the chemical changes during spoilage chemical reactions or changes in chemical components are also observed due to spoilage of foods enzymes play a vital role in catalyzing these chemical reactions for example protease breaks proteins into simpler components pseudomonas species utilizes a wide variety of organic components and produce acids oxidatively from glucose or maltose they are responsible of producing water soluble fluorescent pigment such as fluorescein in spoiled foods the above species is capable of producing catalase oxidase and other enzymes that contributes to spoilage of refrigerated fresh animal products similarly pectiolytic enzymes can cause soft rot of fleshy vegetables regarding biological changes during spoilage when a favorable condition is achieved microorganisms can make either desirable or undesirable changes to the quality of foods the growth may be intentional growth of microbes as a part of food preservation or they may be grow unintentionally and lead to food spoilage microorganisms utilize the food supply as a source of nutrients for their growth and make the food unfit for consumption the vigorous growth of microorganism produce considerable changes both in physical and chemical nature of food microorganisms like yeast prefer high sugar foods but are particularly attracted to cheese bread and their appearance of the bloom on the surface of food indicates that spoilage has begun now we'll move to another topic regarding spoilage of specific products first we'll see about spoilage of fruit and vegetables fruit and vegetables possess a protective outer covering made of natural waxy cuticle layer containing cutin colonization and lesion developments occur rapidly in damaged fruit or plant tissues the physical damage such as bruise cracks and punctures on the surface of fruit or vegetable harbors the growth of spoilage microbes the formation of lesion is rapid and occurs within few days which also raises the risk of reproducing spoilage microorganism at the site of open wound this open wound presents the potential of cross contamination during processing the bacterium 
Ervinia caratovora is a soft rot causing organism in wide range of fruits and vegetables. Soft rot is a form of decay characteristics caused by soft rot bacteria which damage the succulent part of fruit and vegetable. This bacterium degrades the pectate molecules and eventually causing plant structure to fall apart. Soft rot looks like water soaked spots which enlarge over time and become shrunken and soft. Also this will lead to discoloration from cream to black in the internal tissues and also produces strong disagreeable odor. From the given table you can visualize few common type of spoilage in fruits and vegetables. In case of minimally processed cut fruit and vegetable, few changes will happen. They are surface discoloration, for example, pinking of lettuce, browning of cut potato, graying and browning in pineapple, and gray discoloration with cabbage. Also happens water soaked appearance or translucency in case of melons, papaya, tomatoes. Moisture loss in baby carrots and celery sticks. Also, production of off order in broccoli florets and diced cabbage packed with low oxygen and high carbon dioxide. Mold spoilage of fruits and vegetables may cause visible growth, rods, and discoloration such as blue mold rot, grey mold rot, botrytis rot, and brown rot. Also, due to fungal spoilage, the infected area may turn dry, hard, and discolored which is commonly called as dry rot. Next is the spoilage of meat, fish and poultry products. Under aerobic condition, bacteria may cause changes in texture, color, fat and taste of meat. The changes are slime formation on meat surface, off order development with or without production of gas, different surface colors due to pigmented bacteria and undesirable taste. You would have seen few spoilage defects in ready to eat meat based products like slime formation, production of turbid juice in the package, gas production and discoloration. The sliminess on the surface of meat is caused by Pseudomonas astinobacter, Moraxella bacillus and Micrococcus. The production of oxidizing components such as peroxides or hydrogen sulfides by bacteria change the red color of meat to shades of green, brown or gray. Greening of sausage is caused by lactobacillus and leuconostoc bacteria. Yellow discoloration of meat is produced by micrococcus flavobacterium species. Yellow pigmented cocci and rods cause purple discoloration on surface fat during rancidity and also due to the formation of peroxides. Yellow color changes to greenish and later become purplish blue. Similarly, aerobic growth of mold in meat results in stickiness, viscous, black or white spot, green patches of odors and taste. Viscous is a mycelial growth with white and fuzzy appearance when the meat is stored near freezing temperature which is caused by muca misudo and rhizophus. Under anaerobic condition, facultative and anaerobic bacteria grow within the meat and induce soaring and putrefaction in meat products. Soaring means the sour odor or taste produced by formic, butyric, propionic or lactic acid. These acids are produced either from meat own enzyme or by bacterial action or by proteolysis. Putrefaction is decomposition of protein under anaerobic condition with formation of foul smelling components such as ammonia, 
amines or hydrogen sulfide. Clostridium species usually produce putrefaction in meats. Fish contains more active proteases than meat, which is a reason behind rapid spoilage of fish. Similarly, in lobsters, proteolytic breakdown occurs immediately the minute they expire. The proteases present in the lobster cause the lower abdomen to partially liquefy, which results in the crumbly structure of tile meat when cooked. Oysters are rich in protein as well as in sugar, which resulted from hydrolysis of glycogen. Soaring may occur in the product as a result of fermentation of sugar by coliform bacteria, streptococci, lactobacillus and yeast to produce acid and sour odor. In case of poultry products, bacterial spoilage takes place on the skin lining of body cavity and on cut surfaces. Eviscerated poultry held at 10 degrees Celsius or less than that are spoiled by pseudomonas. Above 10 degrees Celsius, growth of micrococci dominates. Iced cut poultry products show slimy appearance with off order which is caused by pseudomonas and alkali genes. During storage of untreated eggs, the egg white becomes thinner and more watery and also the egg yolk membrane becomes weaker. Spoilage by bacteria in egg product is more prevalent than molds. The most common bacterial spoilage or rot identified in eggs are green rot, colorless rot and black rot. Green rot that is formation of bright green color in egg white is due to pseudomonas fluorescence whereas Colorless rods are produced by Pseudomonas astinobacter alkali genes, which produce highly offensive odors. In case of black rods, the yolk color changes to black with putrid hydrogen sulfide odor. The black rods are caused by Pseudomonas and Aromonas. Let us see about spoilage of cereal products. A little added moisture to the dry grains will result in the growth of molds on the surface of grains in the presence of air. The most common spoilage causing mold species are Aspergillus, Penzelium, Rhizopus and Fusarium. The fungal spoilage of grains include decreased germination, discoloration, development of visible mold growth, musty or sore odor, dry matter loss, nutrient loss, caking and production of mycotoxins in the grain. Discoloration of grains can be caused by fungi results in brown to black germs in wheat and corn and also blue eye in corn due to the presence of aspergillus and penzelium species. Mycotoxins are toxic secondary metabolites produced by filamentous microfungi or molds. The presence of molds produces mycotoxins which are capable of causing disease and even death in humans and animals. In case of dry flowers, a slight variation in the moisture brings about the spoilage by molds. The presence of lactics and coliform bacteria in the flour dough induce acid fermentation when too much of fermentation time is permitted and also result in sour bread. Ropiness is often observed in home-baked bread which is caused by Bacillus subtilis or Bacillus licentiformis. Slimy material with unpleasant odor is observed in such breads. Chalky bread is one type of bread spoilage which is caused by endomycosis fubligera and trichosporon. This type of spoilage is characterized by development of white chalk-like spots on the surface of bread. Another less common type of bread spoilage is red or bloody bread, which is due to the growth of pigmented bacteria Ceratia marcentiens, which produces brilliant red color on starchy surface. Neurospora also involved in imparting pigmentation during spoilage of bread. The toppings which is used during bakery product are more prone to microbial spoilage than the bread portion. Due to the high content of sugar in frostings, they are easily attacked by yeast and mold upon storage. In pasta products, 
The swelling of macrony was caused by bacteria resembling Enterobacter colaceae. A mold of genus Monila is responsible for the formation of purple steaks during drying of macrony on paper. These steaks form at the contact points of macrony and the paper. Next is the spoilage of milk and milk products. We all know that milk acts as an excellent culture medium for variety of microorganisms. Storage of raw milk at room temperature facilitates lactic acid fermentation which makes the milk sour and it is considered spoiled if curdled. Streptococcus, coliform bacteria, enterococci, lactobacilli and micrococci are responsible for producing soreness in milk when stored at a temperature of 10 to 37 degrees Celsius. Organisms such as Streptococcus thermophilus and Streptococcus faecalis are capable of producing about 1% of acid at higher temperature of 37 to 50 degrees Celsius. Sometimes you would have seen the formation of foam at the surface of milk and a floating curd with gas bubbles in case of liquid milk and curd respectively. This is due to bacillus species, coliform bacteria, clostridium species which produce hydrogen and carbon dioxide. Acid proteolysis is caused by species of micrococcus which leads to shrunken curd and expression of whey. Paspolipase production in raw milk results in the development of bitter or flavor due to the release of fatty acid by milk's natural lipase. Pseudomonas fluorescens is the common producer of lipases in milk and milk products. The majority of products such as milk, butter, cheese and dry whole milk are affected by residual lipase. During this type of deterioration, the release of short chain and long chain fatty acid results in the occurrence of rancid and soapy flavor respectively. Oxidation of free unsaturated fatty acids to aldehydes and ketones results in an oxidized flavor of milk. Sliminess and ropiness may be due to bacterial and non-bacterial sources. Bacterial ropiness is evidenced as ropiness at the top of milk or throughout. Surface ropiness is caused by alkali genes and micrococcus species, whereas ropiness throughout the milk is caused by enterobacter aerogenes and Klebsiella species and E. coli. The microbial spoilage of milk creates a flavor to milk. From the given table, you can visualize the different flavor and color change in milk caused by different microorganisms. Next is the spoilage of canned food products. Spoilage of canned products may be due to chemical reaction or microbial source or both. Bacterial spoilage is either due to the survival of microorganism even after the heat treatment or due to the leakage of canned content after process permitting the entrance of organisms. Chemical spoilage of canned products resulted in the formation of hydrogen gas followed by corrosion of the can. This spoilage is also called as hydrogen swell. A perfect can of flat or slightly concave. A swelled can is one whose ends are slightly bulged due to the development of gas within the can as a result of decomposition caused by chemical or microbial reaction. The end of the swell can remain convex and move back to the position if pressed inward. The product of swelled can is not acceptable for consumption as it may be infected by bacteria. A soft swell has both ends bulged but the gas pressure is low enough to permit the ends to be dented by manual pressure whereas in hard swell 
due to high gas pressure the ends are too hard to be dented by hand hard swell may lead to bursting of can due to high pressure build up inside the can on pressing or pushing of one end of the bulged can the other end bulges in places of previous one and the can with this condition is known as springer springer is maybe due to the initial stage of hydrogen swell or by overfilling of the cans or by insufficient exhausting product with this can condition is still fit for consumption flipper is due to the mild positive pressure created inside the can due to overfilling or under exhausting the can may be of normal appearance but if the end is struck sharply against a solid it becomes convex and it can be pushed back to the normal condition by a little pressure non acidic foods like vegetables or decayed by development of microorganisms without production of gas resulting in flat sore and usually caused by species of bacillus flat sore spoilage of acid foods like tomato is caused by bacillus coagulans sulfur stinker spoilage is caused by d sulfato maculum nigri fans it is evident from the strong odor of hydrogen sulfide when the can is opened in canned corns it produces the discoloration of liquid to bluish gray next we will see about some common spoilage of sugar and sugar based products the spoilage of sugar and sugar based products are limited to that caused by osmophilic or zero tolerant organisms saccharomyces and certain molds are responsible for the spoilage liquid sugar with high sugar content such as 67 to 72 degree bricks supports the growth of yeast such as saccharomyces candida which may enter from air moisture absorption by sugar at the surface results in the growth of microorganism and spoilage of product canned molasses or syrup is subjected to spoilage by osmophilic yeast that survive the heat process the maple sap gets contaminated when it is drawn the type of spoilage are ropy or stringy sap cloudy pigmented sap sour sap and moldy sap the chief spoilage organism in honey are osmophilic yeast species of zygosaccharomyces also species of penicillium and muco develop slowly in honey the last is the spoilage of fried foods the best thing about fried foods like potato chip is that they are dry due to their dry condition and non perishable nature they have low number of microbes and long shelf life the fried products are expected to be crisp even after storage but if stored in high humid environment the texture of chips become soggy and tough the deterioration of fried foods may be due to hydrolytic or oxidative rancidity hydrolytic rancidity may occur due to reactions of fat with water and produce free fatty acids in oxidative rancidity fat is oxidized and decomposed into different components which lead to objectionable flavors color change and toxic substances let us summarize the points 20% of all food is lost due to spoilage spoilage of food results in changes in physical nature of product such as formation of slimy layer ropiness color change and softness of peel chemical reactions or changes in chemical components are also observed due to spoilage of foods growth of microorganisms results in considerable changes in both the physical and chemical nature of food thank you